the gas which is dissolved in uh, magma and in lava when it erupts at the surface is important in a number of ways. You've already heard in the film that the gas is important in contributing or was important in contributing to the early atmosphere of the Earth and also important in contributing to the water of the oceans. In fact, water um, in the form of steam, obviously, forms about 70, sometimes even as much as 95% of the gases erupted from a volcano. Carbon dioxide is another very important gas, and then also there's sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, chlorine, and a number of, other, number of others. It's the very explosive um, release of gas that causes the, uh, the violence of the eruptions when um, igneous rock reaches the surface and produces the rocks that we call pyroclastic or fire-broken rocks. Such fragmental, broken-up volcanic debris lies like a sheet around um, such volcanoes as in Hawaii, for example. And amongst this uh, debris, larger fragments are called volcanic bombs. Accumulations of uh, such debris often form cones, such as um, this cone off the south coast of Iceland, close to the volcano of Sertse, which erupted in the 60s and was quite um, often mentioned in the, in the news. This is volcanic ash. It's a crumbly, uh, very easily broken up rock, not yet uh, lithified or converted into hard rock. And this is pumice, which is also associated with um, explosive volcanoes. The holes are the holes in which gas was trapped um, <clears throat> the consolidated deposits of ash and pumice are quite often found in the geological record and indicate quite clearly a period of volcanic activity in the geological history of the area. In the Northwest Territories, there are very extensive exposures of Precambrian fragmental volcanic rocks, now consolidated as beds of volcanic breccia, tilted on edge as a result of later mountain building. Finer volcanic ash or tuff forms the thin layers, and erosion by waves has led the fragments to stand out on the surface of the outcrop. The fragments are very similar to rocks forming lava flows and dikes in the same region. This cross section of the subsurface beneath an area where volcanoes have erupted, such as here and here, shows quite clearly why the dikes and sills in an area are usually related uh, in composition of the rocks to the pyroclastics of the volcanics. For example, here are the volcanic uh, lavas and the pyroclastics, and the dikes and the sills in the same area form part of the plumbing system of the volcano. And it's for this reason that the um, that these rocks are related when one finds them in the field. The violence of the eruptions um, of a volcano leads us to be able to classify volcanoes into those which are very explosive and those which are less explosive. The kinds which produce explosive pyroclastic debris on some occasions and lava on others form what are called composite volcanic cones. Mount Fuji in Japan is a typical example of a composite cone with the profile steepening towards the crater at the top. Another island arc volcano, Mount Mayan in the Philippines, is another example, although this is made of a little more ash than Mount Fuji. The Violent eruptions of volcanoes are characterized by the release of a great deal of gas. And in the most violent eruptions, the phenomenon of a glowing gas cloud occasionally uh, occurs. It was such a glowing gas cloud which destroyed uh, Pompeii, probably, and also Montpele in Martinique in the early part of this century. Such a cloud is composed of very hot gas 
um, at perhaps 800 degrees centigrade, loaded with glass fragments produced by the blowing to pieces of rock froth, such as pumice. But the most violent eruptions are those which produce calderas. In this case, the uh, volcano releases an enormous amount of gas uh, all at one time, uh, with the energy of perhaps 16,000 megatons of TNT, compared with the uh, fifth of a megaton of a Hiroshima bomb. In this case, the top of the volcano is blown right off, and what remains subsides into the, uh, the cavity which is, which is left. Uh, Krakatoa, which erupted in 1883, is a typical example of the uh, formation of a caldera. Uh, Krakatoa erupted again in 1929, not with anything like the same violence, uh, but some archive footage of that occurrence is quite interesting to, to look at. The film is unfortunately badly scratched, but it still gives a very good idea of the violence of such an eruption, not by any means, of course, as violent as the classic eruption of 1883, but nevertheless a, a good taste of the activity for which Krakatoa is, is famous. The eruption took place, as you can see, beneath the surface of, a, uh, of the sea, in fact, which invaded the caldera which was created in 1883. The observations that were made at that time were not done with the sophisticated instruments which are available today. The dark material is uh, fragmented pumice and ash. Of course, there's a great deal of steam derived from the heating of the seawater. The so-called Crater Lake in Oregon is uh, an example of a rather small caldera. The Wizard Island, as it's called, in the center is later, uh, later cone, and the cliffs around the, the lake form the margin of the caldera. Another caldera occurs in Hawaii, where it forms the volcano Kilauea. It's important because of being the site of a volcano observatory. The area is very active volcanically, and the combination of laboratory and on-the-spot field observations at Kilauea make it one of the most important sites for the observation of volcanoes in the, the world. The lava on Hawaii is very fluid and streams down the flanks of the volcanoes in a dramatic fashion. Often erupting from rifts, these fountains are twice the height of the Niagara Falls. A lot of gas escapes from the very hot, bubbling lava, and it's that gas which propels the lava into dramatic fountains, often reaching over a thousand feet in height. The lava gathers in lakes at the summit of the Hawaiian volcanoes. And after an eruption, the liquid lava, cooled on the surface, drains back into the magma chamber, or reservoir, that lies just beneath the surface of the, the volcano. The lava originally came from a depth of about 60 or 70 kilometers, and gathered in a chamber about three kilometers beneath the surface. The movement of the lava from the deep chamber into the local reservoir is recorded by seismometers. Portable instruments are placed all around the flanks of the volcanoes, and the signals are received back at the central observatory via cables. These are often destroyed during eruptions and have to be relayed. The portable seismometers record earthquakes. Earthquakes caused usually by the movement of the liquid rock making its way towards the the surface. Some of the records received are quite typical earthquakes with a sudden shock. Here you see the needle passing over the trace of an earlier earthquake. And suddenly another earthquake occurs. A quite sudden shock. About 150 of these are received on an average day at the observatory.